Hey guys, so as you can see here, I actually spent a lot of time this afternoon rearranging my books and DVDs into rainbow shelves, and I'm super excited because it looks beautiful. Anyway, I thought I'd take this opportunity to do a quick DVD collection tour because people have been asking me to do that. And two things you just need to know is, one, I don't have a huge number of DVDs. That is because I only recently started collecting them and Blu-rays recently. The second thing is, is I don't like this sort of competitively capitalist view on YouTube at the moment which is basically buy all the DVDs and then not actually watch any of them. So the ones displayed are only ones that I have seen before. There is a bit at the end of my DVD table of the ones I haven't seen, but here is basically my collection of DVDs that I have seen. So the first DVDs we have here are obviously our bright red ones. We have Moulin Rouge, which is amazing. I absolutely love it. Um, the Last Wave is an Australian film. It's on the 1001 Movies list. Strictly Ballroom, also on the 1001 Movies list. Also Australian, actually, and I actually really loved it. Um, Breakfast at Tiffany's, not a huge fan of. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, which is not my favorite Harry Potter movie, but anyway. And then we have Jackie, which I absolutely loved. For some reason, I really love those kinds of historical American films, and Jackie was absolutely no exception. Next, we go across, we have Boogie Nights. A little bit risque, but uh, quite enjoyable, although not a huge fan of Mark Wahlberg. Then we continue over here to the rest of the red ones. We have Love Actually, which is obviously essential Christmas viewing. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And then we have a combination of Stripes and Groundhog Day. I don't actually think I've seen Stripes, but I have seen Groundhog Day. Not the best Bill Murray movie, in my opinion. Next, we come down onto our orange shelf. Not too many orange movies, but we do have Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark, which I watched recently with my friend Colin. Absolutely loved. Didn't really grow up with Indiana Jones, but loved this recently. Then we go across here. Da -da 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 -da. Now, these are kind of gold slash brown, which means that they don't really actually fit into the yellow section, but I kind of was got tired after a while. So anyway, of course we have Train Spotting on the 1001 movies list, Gallipoli, another Australian movie which is on the 1001 movies list. I tried to start with Australian ones because, you know, that's where I'm from, that's my heritage. I thought it was important. Gallipoli kind of okay, not my favorite. Mel Gibson in it though. Eh, iffy. Lost in Translation, much better Bill Murray film than Groundhog Day in my opinion. Still not my favorite, but all right. Then we have Knights of Badastum, which I got because a, um, well, let's be honest, an ex-boyfriend was like, let's watch this. Not a great film. Didn't enjoy it at all. Lantana, once again, sorry, that's Top Gun. Lantana, once again, an Australian movie on the 1001 movies list. Okay, not too bad. Top Gun, freaking love the soundtrack. Didn't watch it until recently. Freaking loved it. Now we go down into our yellows, and of course we start with Mad Max. Yet again, more Australian 1001 films. Liked it, not a huge fan. Kill Bill, freaking loved it. Haven't got uh, volume two yet, I'm gonna do that soon. I think my friend Luke might. Luke, is that one of the ones you're giving to me? I can't remember, anyway. Can't remember, anyway. Lilo and Stitch 2, Stitch has a glitch. Lilo and Stitch is my absolute favorite Disney series from when I was a kid. My sister and I know every single word. I tried to learn the hula from that film. Um, Freaking very best series in the entire world. Banana is a television series. It is the follow-up from Cucumber, which I have reviewed and I will leave in the description. Cucumber is down in the green section. Cucumber is along here, actually. It's the next one to see. Cucumber is amazing. Like, honestly, the best TV show I have watched in such a long time. If you're looking for something new to watch, definitely recommend Cucumber. Next, of course, we have Amelie. I think that was one of the very first 1001 movies that I actually bought. Not a huge fan of it, but uh, all right, nonetheless. Then we go down here and we continue through our greens and into blue. We have Elf, which is another Christmas viewing staple. Watched it for the first time this last Christmas, absolutely loved it. Definite thumbs up for that one. Then we go across here, we have Roman Holiday, some Aubrey Hepburn. Liked it, 
not a huge fan of it. Um, it was okay, wouldn't give it a no, but um, definitely good content, but eh, not my favorite. Adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, yet another Aussie one from the 1001 movies list. And then we have Room, which is honestly one of the best films I have seen in the past few years. I freaking, freaking love Room. It is so good and Brie Larson is one of the few like celebrities that I follow on Instagram because she is just super. Then we come across here to our, then, then we come across here to our darker blues and all of a sudden we're getting into Steel Magnolias. Weirdly, because I've been going to a lot of those like, uh, not buy and sells, but like buy nothing pages where people basically give away DVDs for free. So many people in Perth have still Magnolias to give away for free. It's so crazy. And then next to it we have Arrival, which after Room is honestly another one of my very favorite films from the past few years. I sort of just caught up on the 2016 movies and man, Arrival freaking blew my mind. Then of course we have Pokemon the first movie. Pokemon is a big thumbs up for me. I freaking love that series. It's so, so great. Then we have Robert Pooh Fence, which is another Aussie film from the 1001 list. Very, very good. Absolutely heartbreaking. And then we have Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Better than Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Still not my favorite though. Jaws on the other hand, Freaking, I struggled so much watching this movie. I am not a huge fan of it, but uh, it's still a classic. It's still one of those ones that should be watched. So, I don't know. Still not a huge fan of it, though. Anyway, then we continue across into our purples. We've got Spider-Man 2. Once again, an ex-boyfriend was like, let's watch this movie. So I got it, and, um, oh... R.I.P. Gwen Stacy. Sorry if you haven't seen Spider-Man 2. It's been out for at least five years. Uh, then we have Babe, yet another one that is Australian and is on the 1001 movies list. Um, you know, that'll do, pig. That'll do. Then we move over here into more purple and we have Dirty Dancing. I carried a watermelon. I loved this. Um, yeah, I would say I loved it. It's a pretty good movie. Um... Not my top one, but definitely better than Edward Scissorhands. Didn't like Edward Scissorhands. Picnic at Hanging Rock, another Aussie one from the 1001 films list. Super creepy, super intense. Bit more artsy, I guess, but I guess I kind of liked it. And then Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, which I would say is probably my favorite Harry Potter movie. It's definitely the one that I go to the most when I'm just looking for one to watch. I kind of, I don't know why that one is my favorite, to be quite honest. Then we go across here, and we have Legally Blonde, which I think I got for like $2 at an op shop, but it's a staple that every single person should have, because it's a freaking great movie. And then we have this five movie collection, which has Fern Gully, Fern Gully 2, Anastasia, Thumbelina, and most importantly, it has Casper Meets Wendy. If you've never watched Casper Meets Wendy, you are missing out on a childhood, my friends. That was my favorite, favorite movie growing up. And even still, every now and again, when I do the like snap and my outfit changes in any of my vlogs, that is 100% a callback to Hilary Duff in Casper Meets Wendy. Freaking love that movie. Anyway. Let's move up to, I think we've got some more gray-ish, orangey ones. Firefly, season one. That is one of the few television series that I have in the shelf, and that is because it is a one season television series. So I felt that it could just fit an aesthetic. Um, then we have Out of Africa, starring, uh, who's starring in that? Meryl Streep. I found that one really hard to get into, but at the end, it kind of broke my heart. Then we have Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1, and Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. Now, you probably have noticed that there is no Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, or Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban in this shelf. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban is my favorite Harry Potter book, and therefore I will never ever buy that movie. Um, no, that's not quite true. I did have it at one stage, but I hate it, so. Anyway, um, I do like those three movies that are there though, six, seven, and eight. They're not too bad. Then we have How to Be Single, which I don't know why I have that. It's honestly a horrible movie and it's on Netflix. So I don't know why I have a physical copy of that, but I do. Then we continue down, 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 down. And then 
we have our black DVDs, we have Les Mis, which makes me cry, and every time I watch it, I uh, spend up, spend like the next two weeks uh, listening to the soundtrack. Then next to it, of course, we have The Prestige, which was wonderful. I watched that for the first time last year. So, so good. On all of these, or these two so far, 1001 Movies, Back to the Future, the trilogy. I think I've only seen the first one of those. I don't know why I have the trilogy in there. Anyway, uh, Batman, that is our original Batman, um, 1001 Movies. The Hunger Games, uh, that is the first one that I... First movie that I bought on Ultra HD when I bought my 4K TV. Freaking love it. Um, I have actually been buying more Blu-rays recently, which surprises me because I thought that they'd be super expensive, and they're not. I know that there aren't a lot of Blu-rays in this shelf, but that is just because um, I only recently got my fancy television and a way to watch them. Next, we have the Pitch Perfect collection. That is just one of my... Oh, I don't actually even care if it's embarrassing. Anna Kendrick is an absolute doll and I freaking love her. Um, that is one of my favorite movies to watch when I'm having a struggle time. So um, that whole series is in there. Schindler's List, amazing. 10 out of 10, honestly. If I was gonna say what my two favorite movies in this shelf were, in this like entire shelf, it would be Schindler's List and probably Lilo and Stitch. But I don't know where my actual copy of Lilo and Stitch is. The Sixth Sense, that's a 1001 movie. Good Morning Vietnam, oh my god. I love you so much. Focus. I love you so much. Also, you remind me of my stepdad, who I also love very much. Um, okay, now it's just out of focus. Really, why are you doing this to me? Okay, Blade Runner, the director's cut, which I got recently and rewatched before 2049 um, to do my comparison one. Romper Stumper, another Australian film which is super intense. Um, if you haven't seen Romper Stumper, I would definitely recommend it. A little bit triggering and definitely a bit gross. Star Wars, uh, the only Star Wars that I have because I accidentally stole it from a friend. 2001 A Space Odyssey, reviewed that. That's one of the few ones on Blu-ray. And then we also have Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Again, this one on Blu-ray because I told you it's my very favorite. Then we have Get Out. Freaking great. Amour, once again, this is actually probably, when I said my two favorites, probably Schindler's List and Amour. Both very intense for different reasons, but wonderful. Chicago, which I actually really loved when I saw it recently. Coyote Ugly. That song is constantly in my head. And Edge of Seventeen, which is... I don't actually remember buying this DVD, but I'm glad that I know that I do, that I bought it because um, I was about to buy it again yesterday and I didn't. Um, Edge of Seventeen, freaking loved it. Someone said to me the other day that they loved Lady Bird, but they felt that it was unnecessary to have Edge of Seventeen and Lady Bird. And I actually kind of agree with them. So yeah, so those are all black DVDs. Finally, we have this very last section down here and oh, I can finally sit on the ground. That has been hurting my arm for 13 minutes now. We have along this shelf, we have the leftover white ones, uh, which we have Black Swan freaking loved. There's like, recently when I watched this, um, I was sort of going through a bit of a slump with movies and Black, Black Swan just kind of was just like a resurgence. I watched that and I was like, yes, I'm ready. Give me more 1001 movies. And I think that that was quite close to the start of making this YouTube channel. So thank you, Natalie Portman. Thank you, Darren Aronofsky. Uh, Carrie, this is the original Carrie. It's on the 1001 list. Liked it. I'd be interested to see the Chloe Moritz version, actually, to be quite honest with you. Um, Casablanca, I heard so many wonderful things about. Did not enjoy. I'm not really sure why. The Duff cracks me up because this has Alice and Jenny and Mae Whitman in it. You cannot go wrong with those two. The Graduate, not overly a fan of. Grave of the Fireflies, um, RIP my tear ducts. That is, oh, I can't even explain how much I cried watching that movie. Hidden Figures, another one of my absolute favorites. One of the few that's still in plastic. Um, 
because generally I say I have to watch a DVD before I put it away, but I guess I have seen hidden figures. Let me have Lilo and Stitch, my absolute favorite, of course. Silence of the Lambs, very intense. Slumdog Millionaire, another one of those from the very start of the 1001 project that I'm just so glad I saw. It was amazing. Dev Patel did a wonderful job in it. Precious, uh, also really wonderful. Hey, they match. Um, really great. Pretty Woman, one of those staples. Liked it. Not, wouldn't say it's overly my favorite. Um, to Kill a Mockingbird, really great. It, this is uh, Steven, this is the like 1993 miniseries. Um, I haven't got the new It on DVD yet, uh, even though it's wonderful. Uh, Tootsie. Seven, which I just did for Film Club this week. Atonement, which we're doing for Film Club next week. Baby Driver, one of my few 4K DVDs. That was, I haven't had a chance to watch that on the 4K yet. That was going to be what I used to test it. And I just used Hunger Games instead. And finally, and finally, 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 probably my least favorite of any movie that I have on here uh, is My Brilliant Career, which is another 1001 film from Australia. And uh, that is all of the DVDs from this big old shelf. Ta-da, focus. Ta-da. Now, like I said, I keep my TV series separate. Um, there's a weird reason that they're out here in the garage with the car. It's because I'm looking at filling in like these areas. I wanna put a color in the back and then put shelves over them and just have like DVDs throughout the whole wall, when I eventually have a better co uh, collection, that is, anyway. Uh, so they're kind of out here. I should really move them inside. Um, I wasn't really supposed to have the car in this driveway anymore. But anyway, so let's run through these really quick. I don't need to go through them one by one. Breaking Bad was the very first television show that I watched for the purpose of 1001 movies. Uh, 1001 TV shows, I should say, because it was the only one that I knew for certain was going to be on the list because it is the front cover of the book. Um, great show, very intense. Literally took me a year to get through because it is so intense and my brain can't handle that sort of thing. The Big Bang Theory. Now, yes, this is the one thing that I catch the most slack for. Look, I'll tell you, it's not the best show around. I have a lot of problems with it. But when I go through my anxiety periods, that is kind of the only thing that fixes me. Uh, for example, at the moment, I'm currently going through a really stressful time, and that is what is in my DVD player at the moment. So, yeah. Then we have the entire series of Friends, except season eight, because at one stage I was going to sell them all on eBay or Gumtree or something, but I only ever sold season eight. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, then we have Gilmore Girls, which is one of my go-to eating, like, watching while I eat dinner series. I freaking love that show. Uh, I am Rory Gilmore in a lot of ways. Then we have Game of Thrones. This is weird. This is the only thing that I have a multiple copy of. For some reason, I have two copies of the first season. Interesting. Glee, another one of those series that I have no qualms in saying it's not great, um, but I am a really big musical theater fan and I really just love singing along to things in the car and Glee makes that really straightforward and it was basically just something to sing along to while I watch television shows. Um, so that is why I have that. And also all of these shows so far have obviously been on the 1001 TV shows list. Um, the next two are exceptions. We have Hamish and Andy's Australia vs New Zealand Caravan of Courage. And then we have Hamish and Andy Caravan of Courage, I think the original edition. So, not great shows. Then we have How I Met Your Mother. I don't know where the rest of my ones have gone. Um, so both Jemay, Private School Girl, and Jonah from Tonga are on the 1001 TV shows list. Oh, both of these are terrible shows. I really loved uh, Summer Heights High, but both of these are just actually really terrible. Then we have Keeping Up With Kardashians, uh, also on the 1001 TV shows list, and I think that I should watch all of them, so that's why that's there. Modern Family, seasons one through three, which I freaking love. At the moment, I've currently lost one of my discs for season four, otherwise I would have season four out here as well. New Girl is my favorite television show of all time. I freaking love this show. 
I am Jessica Day in a lot of ways. <clears throat> oh, I was hoping to get through this without coughing. Uh, then we have The Office seasons one through four and part of season five. Um, the Office is a show that I really loved when I first watched it. Not so big a fan of it now. I guess, I don't know. Anyway, Parenthood, we've got season one. I've got the other seasons in there, in there, by there, you can't actually see what I'm saying. I have the other seasons inside because I have seasons two and three to watch. Um, another 1001 show, Parks and Recreation, I take it back that New Girl was my favorite show. It's absolutely tied with Parks and Recreation because I am also Leslie Nope. Um, then we have Party Down, which is something that Adam Scott from Parks and Recreation did either, I think it was concurrently with Parks and Recreation. He got big on this show, so he had to leave this show, so it canceled after two seasons. I know a lot of people who really love this show, and I know a lot of people who don't know about this show. I'm not a huge fan of it. I think that the humor is a little bit too simple in terms of its offensiveness, but I hear, you know, a lot of people think that that's the thing that's really brilliant about it, so I don't really know. Pretty Little Liars, all of this, da 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 da, another 1001 show, but I oh mean, you can come for me. I freaking love Pretty Little Liars, it's the best. I am Spencer um, of all of them. Oh, I can't move this freaking box, it's too heavy. Puberty Blues, an Australian based television series that's on the 1001 list. Freaking loved both of these. They both made me cry. They're both very intense. Rick and Morty. Look, I'll, I don't know. I kind of like Rick and Morty. It's not great, though. Scrubs used to be my very first favorite show before Parks and Recreation. I've got most of the seasons here. I don't know what happened to the rest. Then we've got The Simpsons, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, Veronica Mars, which I freaking love, The West Wing, which is one of the best television show dramas in the entire world, Will and Grace, which is one of the best television show comedies in the entire world, Workaholics seasons one and two, and I don't know where my other seasons have gone, otherwise I would be finished that by now. And finally, Sex and the City season one, which is out of alphabetical order, and you know what? Ta-da! Now it's in alphabetical order, and those are my TV series on DVD. There's not a lot of them, because all of the frickin' rest of them are in here on the table. I haven't shown you the table yet. I'm a mess. That's why I'm mostly doing this video today, because I'm a mess. This is the table of sh things I haven't watched yet. Ta-da! Yeah, look, it's embarrassing. And that's where the majority of all the DVDs that I have um, that aren't on the shelves and things are. They're on the table. So, yes. Anyway, this has been my DVD collection tour. I don't know if you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought of it. I don't know. It seems like one of those like staple things to do. And also, I just really wanted to show you guys the rainbow shelves because I put a lot of effort into creating them today. So anyway, I hope you guys are having a good week. I will see you in a couple of days with the new Film Club Friday. Don't forget that if you have seen Atonement and you want your comment featured in a new video about it, leave a comment on the old Film Club Friday one and I'll feature your comment in Friday's video. Anyway, that's all for today. Bye guys.